Welcome to a special episode of the Choco Bros Podcast. She goes for the handshake. I'm afraid one just because I think the. Yep. The oh, is. and Cody is going to wow. take it down. We have that's a right. champion. Lopez couldn't figure it out. It looks like Sam qualifies and for World Cup. Oh, yeah. yeah. Extends the hand. So Zach now is the other Worlds qualified Zach player. Zach Burrell going to Worlds. We're going to Worlds. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Choker Bros. We're your Worlds qualified hosts, Sam Snipe Prime. Zach Burrell. And Cody Snodgrass. And uh, this week we have a lot to talk about. Um, I think that we will kind of go into the Dark Cup a little bit because there was a few cool things that happened there. And then we'll talk about our Road to Worlds. And also, uh, uh, I think, yeah, we can talk about when we talk about Deck Origins. You might have something to say about the Dark CC too. <laughs> what? Why right? would I have seen you were, Weren't you like buying your deck while judging at Dark CC? Yeah, but I bought a whole bunch of cards that I ended up playing either. Okay. Like I also bought Mono Fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> I was legit gonna play it. Like I bought like a ton of cards for it. Oh, yeah, but man. we'll start with the Dark CC. So the Dark CC um, was interesting. Uh, the highlights of the Dark CC um, were probably the, the the deck that won was kind of like the the Wind uh, Water deck where Galdor played that kind of convinced me that <clears throat> I actually did want to be on Unit H and Chaos Walker m- more so than I wanted to be on Chaos Walker. Like I knew that Chaos Walker is just a better card than Famfrit. Um, there are a lot of cards in the format where I feel like you have to remove them, and most notably, Famfrit cannot touch them. The best example of this is probably Fasoya um, or Sephiroth, as Famfrit doesn't do anything against either of those cards um, because usually, like the when you want to remove them, they've already got off their effect, mm-hmm. and when they're getting it off again, is under the Renoa spell, and so you want to be able to like point your Chaos Walker at those cards, and so that kind of convinced me that I want to play that. But the Dark CC was interesting. Um, inter- the, the two interesting things came out, coming out of the Dark CC was having someone had a, uh, going into the top eight. You had two people with game losses. One because they had forty nine cards turned in, and one because they had fifty one <laughs> cards written down. So if only they had checked each other's deck lists. <laughs> yeah, right. There's swap a card. <laughs> yeah, um, it was interesting to say the least. The most interesting <clears throat> thing actually probably happened in the final round, where we had two players. Sorry, you had you had a player come up and and say, "Well, I act uh, I lost this round, but I accidentally played the wrong person. I was supposed to play this person, and I didn't." And so the way that we ruled that is the only way I I could rule is well, listen, like you didn't show up for the game you were supposed to play. <laughs> you had five minutes, and you spent forty minutes at this match. <laughs> um, so one of the players just showed up, played someone they weren't supposed to play because their names aren't on the slip. It's like code names or whatever. They didn't, neither player looked to see that, you know, like that's still your responsibility, but neither player looked. So he sat, he accidentally played the wrong person. I'm sure that he's laughing about it. I don't know that it mattered. I think it was the last round and I don't think they were in contention for top eight. So I think that, you know, it's just something to learn from, to laugh about. And, and now that we don't have player names, not knowing your opponent could be really interesting. You could actually just sit down and play the wrong person for spending an hour of your life or 30 minutes or whatever. But yeah, so yeah, I bought a bunch of Mono Fire cards and I was pretty set on playing Mono Fire. I thought, hey, look, like this is this deck is the real deal going into nationals. Um, uh, Richie told me that uh, that I should just play a whole bunch of summons, as many summons as I could possibly jam into the deck. And I was like, well, that sounds fun. <laughs> I'll just do that because I was just so busy with life that I didn't have a lot of time to test um almost had no time to test i feel you (laughs) so i was like going into i i I had tested against a lot of the mainstream decks i tested against agrius i tested against mono ice a a ton against mono ice a ton against uh ice fire i tested against a bunch of decks with just a bunch of janky decks so uh, i understood like ways to beat the decks but not necessarily had any idea what i was going to play um so there we are we show up uh Basically, here's how my day went. I walked into the room and I wanted to test because I had no games, right? And I was going to test the Agrius deck um, just to make sure it's what I wanted to play because we hadn't turned in the deck list yet. And the, the most annoying thing is that everyone around you is going to be walking around like <laughs> pretending like they're not looking at your list, but they are. And it's just like, I don't care. Like, here, I reached this point where I was like, I don't care if you know what I'm playing. Like, you knew this exactly. Like, I told everyone what I was playing. Here's what I'm playing. I even announced on Facebook what I plan on playing the night before. Like, here's what I'm playing. 
Um, I don't care. You still have to be able to beat me. Um, and so, and, and for, you know, for the most part, as far as matches goes, that turned out to be basically impossible for anyone besides Kyle Peters, <laughs> who, <laughs> who was my one loss. Um, for oh, was we'll he your only loss the whole time? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, I lost to him. That was in the round, last round of Swiss. Round six of Swiss. Or six, I, yeah, yeah, because he was undefeated seven. going into the mirror, right? Yep. So Kyle Peters was my only loss at nationals. Um, I mean, but so I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna test this deck, and I. And I'm going to be really annoyed that everyone keeps coming over. So I was just like, hey, guys, I'm playing Wind Water and Three Color Agrius. I'm going to sit right here and play. <laughs> so that's what I did. And a bunch of people watched. It was like, whatever. But I was like, I just, I just want to test the deck. And I think I went like 0 and 4 originally against like Zayim playing Mono Water. And I was like, wow, this is really fun. Um, <laughs> but what happened is I, I was just playing the deck badly. Um, I kept calling, like, I think Locke is excellent at getting backups. So I just kept calling backup with Locke. Yeah. And then I would end the game with like six backups in my hand and be like, well, how did this happen? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Whereas like, if you just call forward with lock, all your forwards are gas. So that's what you should be calling. I feel like, uh, you know, if you open with the, the, the one backup lock, sure. Call lock or call backup. But so th- that was like my thought process going into decision-making. Um, so you think those few games yeah. you played definitely helped you in the rounds to come then in Swiss playing a deck that was, to- Play a deck that was bonkers probably helped me. <laughs> and so the deck is just nuts. Um, it was a misplay for anyone that did not play it. Um, I can't fault anyone because not a lot of people thought it was the best deck. I, I didn't think it was the best deck. I decided to play it at exactly 7.31 uh, a.m. when I woke up to my teammates raving about how it went first, second, and third in the Dark Cup. And I was just like, man, like... Well, I guess not Dark I'll, Cup. You mean in Japan? The, in Japan, I think it was the Dark oh, Cup Japan, in Japan. Okay. Yeah. And so I was like, man, all right, so I'll play this. Does anyone have the cards? Well, the problem was is Yiniz was trying to play the, the deck too. So she had already like been asking everyone for the cards. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, this is going to be really hard. But I, I messaged Oki, and Oki said that him and Brian would be able to get me the deck. Um, so they did. And then as I was filling up my deck list, I realized that the, both decks had Mirror Web H. Uh, both decks had Cloud of Darkness. Um... I think, and both decks had Unit H. And I was like, yeah, we'll just fill in random cards for this stuff. And Unit H became like a Thornton. <laughs> um, Mirror I Web saw the Thornton. The- I was like, yeah, wow. It was good. It was very good. That was Brian. Uh, that was Brian, uh, his his idea to do it, to play at Burgundy. Um, so it, it ended up being really good. So that's how I came to my list. Um, I know you ended up also on Water Lightning, which is exactly mm-hmm. what I figured you would play, actually, since you had been talking with Sam. And Sam did really well with it at the Arizona Cup. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to... He he didn't like the three-color version. He said it's cute, but not... It doesn't add enough power to risk the inconsistencies. But obviously, you you had quite the time, and people in Japan have been having quite the time. And that's, it's much more of a deck that I would like to play. I like the greedy three-color, super high-value, high-risk, high-reward decks. It yeah. seems like there wasn't much of a risk, though. It yeah. seems like it just kind of flows so, very well. I, I think we've talked about this on the podcast, too, sometimes... I think this is really important for those for those of you who are, are going to be building these types of decks. If your deck is so powerful that you can cut some of the powerfulness for consistency, a lot of times you should do that, right? Because mm-hmm. if your deck's powerful enough, I'd rather cut a little bit of power for consistency and do well, right? Um, the, the thing is, is that <clears throat> this version of, I'm going to call it a Fasoya deck. It's not an Agrius deck. So this version right. of the Fasoya deck um, was actually so consistent that you could cut some, you could add some cards to make it more powerful. And in that case, uh, the cards we added were Renault and Sephiroth. Um, I generally agree, though, that like a two-color deck is going to be way better than a three-color deck. And I can't believe I played a three-color deck going in. Uh, that being said, because like everything's about like searching backups, getting backups, searching for this, searching for that. I felt like the deck is, was just so consistent. I, it fired yeah. an all cylinder for all day. I won every game basically 2 0 against my opponents. The games that I lost were actually the. Now, not to say the wind, the wind water deck wasn't good. I think the wind water deck was nuts. But the games that I. The, the people that took me to game three are only the matches I think that I. are, are almost always the matches, that, there's, with one exception, the matches that I open with wind water. Um, and and not, not to say wind water is not a good deck, but. The, the Fasoya deck is just so good. Like, because 
the wind water deck is Aren't so they both good. Both at... decks. Nah, <laughs> nah. What is a what is a Yuna deck? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Focusing no, around focusing around Yuna, uh, whether it's with Chaos Walker, Pain, or Balfour. No, yeah, one's a Fasoya deck. One has th- here's here's a good way to know. One had two Fasoyas, one had three Fasoyas. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So technically, I was missing four copies of Fasoya, but it wasn't a three a three deck format. We would have, you know, but I, listen, if it was a three deck Blue format, I would have I would have found a way. I would have found a way for sure, because like, that would have been the goal, right? Um, so you could do like that, Earth Lightning Control. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, and it's only getting better. Like when Ian played it, like it's, I feel like it's so much better now than it was then. Uh, mm-hmm. Not that it was really great then; it just caught people off by surprise, by surprise, possibly. But yeah. So that was my format for testing decks. I I don't even to this time know what Cody played. Cody was like just chilling <laughs> at well, the bottom I mean, tables. It doesn't. Help, <laughs> it, doesn't <laughs> uh, it doesn't help that I didn't play very well. Well, no, I I take that back. One deck played was great. It was fantastic. Which was, was the Mono Ice? Oh, no, Mono Ice. Yeah, you I didn't played, play Mono Ice. All of Zodiac. We all played the same two deck lists. Okay, but and then you play and then you played Ice Fire. Yeah, so yeah, he after played all, the, he played Kyle Peters deck card for card. Yeah, so yeah. Af- after all the hate on Mono that I give Mono Fire on the podcast. Yep. All the hate I give Nicholas Schnell. Um yeah, I played Mono Fire. Right, and, and Fire that, Ice. By that fire. really good, right? By Fire. But yeah. Oh uh, yeah, know, it was very good. Very, very, very good. The one problem I have with those lists and is I I'd, I'd only been playing Ice Fire for a little bit in, in testing. But Ifrida was just so insane in Ice Fire, and I would not have ever played without it. Um, would you like, say the same uh, about Nail? Although I guess Nail, would you not play Mono Fire without Nail? Is yeah, yeah, I know I wouldn't play Nail in Mono Fire. Were they playing Nail? No, no, no. no. You had Nail in the Ice Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, Nail, yeah. Nail's very, very good. Um, but I wouldn't play it in uh, oh, Mono okay. Fire. Um, yeah, because you have you just you you want to hit all summons. Um, and ha- and putting the summons in your bin is actually yeah, good, true. but you, you a lot of times you're decking your opponent out. So yeah. nail actually just makes it a little bit easier for you to deck yourself out before they do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not surprised to hear that you did well with the Mono Fire deck. The deck is r- legit, and they built a really really good version of it, um, which yeah, is we really had, cool. I'd been testing it at locals for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, we just came. They they had sent me the final list, and I was like, all right, that sounds good. Looked good. Um, it was unfortunate though, because like testing it at a uh, hotel, I kept telling everybody I was like, I can't take out my other deck, so <laughs> it'll have to just it'll be in the bag. So I'm playing like mono ice and wind water against everybody. Um, but yeah, ended up playing mono fire, by yeah. far the best, the best deck out of the two. Um, but I could feel that. Now, what didn't you like about the fire ice? It wasn't that I didn't like it. It just was nowhere near like the caliber sure, of the sure. mono fire. Like now, the mono. Most of the modifier matches were not close unless they were playing cards that specifically said like beat fire. Sure, like, sure. Like Cecil. Yeah, so for instance, like my round two opponent had like Cecil, Rosa, Minwoo, Noctis, Carbuncle, like a whole bunch time. of <laughs> a whole bunch of anti fire cards. But I was like, okay, well, I'll take this loss. I'll stick on the fire. He had cadets as a second deck. Modifier was a breeze. I fire ice was a breeze. Like Yeah. Now uh how did they convince you specifically to play Mono Fire and Fire Ice instead of saying Mono Fire and then you could just go play your Mono Ice? Well, they or did didn't... you just agree that they're like the best two decks? And I agreed that Mono Fire was the best deck. Um, we had test. I had tested a lot. Um, Mono Ice, <laughs> honestly, it just loses to Mono Fire right now. Sure, which is yeah. really unfortunate. Like, and as much as I would <laughs> like to melted. play, like. Like Mono Ice and Windwater, are like my favorite decks. Um, so like I would like to play Mono Ice because it got me there, um, like to Worlds and the Nationals, obviously. But I also like would like to win. So. <laughs> right. And like, <laughs> like as much as I would, uh, as I would like to play just like the strict Mono Ice from Gen Con, like mm-hmm. I don't think that was gonna win anymore. At least not right now. I agree. After playing mostly similar list to that <laughs> through the weekend. <laughs> I I qualify for Worlds playing Agrius, not two deck format, hundred <laughs> percent. As a, you played Agrius the whole losers bracket, right? From mm-hmm. thirty two all the way to the top, yeah. Thirty two to four, yep. Which is pretty sick. I I could not be happier for you. Like <laughs> I I like the whole time I'm just like freaking out. Like 
even from Wait, the second he won again? Event, he won again? <laughs> even, no, once you just hit 32nd, I was like, this is insane, right? But I never imagined, not that you wouldn't make worlds, but that we would both make worlds. Mm -hmm. That is what's actually insane. There are so many ways that that bracket could have gone to where that doesn't happen. Yeah, and I and had like, to, like, whew, there were some matchups that were difficult on the way up there, too. Uh, right, but, but that's part of playing the Agrius deck, though, right? Is, is it You could just, like, all of a sudden kill people. Like, even in a tough uh, matchup if you, they're not ready for it. So I just talk about my deck a little bit, uh, the Agrius version I played. A lot of the decks were 17 backups. They had, like, a weird three sage, one lid, or two sage, one lid, uh, two lid, whatever. Uh, they had the, the searcher, all their threes. I actually, I didn't like lid after a couple times of, like, drawing it and seeing what my options to pick were. I always wanted to be able to get back Cloud of Darkness or uh, Layla a lot of the time. So I just, I, I went to three sage. And <laughs> I talked the morning of... Uh, with some of the guys and like hey i want to put the cecil in there just for like a i win button against mono fire uh or at least a mostly i win button they can just swing into it but you know try to set up where that doesn't happen yeah and uh i'm like i don't know what to cut and i'm like i want to cut a kuhu lane because i didn't i don't like that summon that much but i'm like i understand why they're there uh none of the other forwards look touchable so i just cut the lid went to 16 backups shoved the cecil in and <laughs> signed up <laughs> like Nice. Yeah, that that uh, the sixteen backup thing I think helped a lot with uh, being able to keep my plays up and being able to draw into gas a lot because like once you search out your or backups with Agrius or whatever, like all you want is gas. And there were some right. turns where I had seven cards in hand, they're all forward options, all with different names, and I could just do whatever I wanted. It's, it's funny you say that because decks play so differently too. Right, you have to be very like you can't just copy and paste someone's list and change a few cards mm -hmm. and not realize that things are going to be drastically different. So you know, just thinking about what you just said compared to my list, which had nineteen backups, right? Mm -hmm. And yet I still never flooded on backups. But because again, remember what I talked about earlier with with what I would call lock with I'd call backup and I'd flood out at first during testing. Yeah. But then during the event, I knew hey, call forward. <laughs> Basically, always yep. get your forward right. But my version had to play so many backups because it's three colors and you want to make sure you're, you're hitting that consistency to get that power level. Right. Yep. But so it, my deck was much more, uh, you know, like both decks can pot it. Like they should call it like aggro. Yes. Like it's literally such an yeah. aggro deck that people don't realize it. Right. <laughs> I literally have that deck name on FF decks. It's aggro. Yes. It was a different. Oh, version. really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. But point being is that, but they, they play so there's some minute details that are so different about each deck. Mm -hmm. You really have to be in tune with them, right? The, if I had pl tried to play your version the way I play my version, I, I don't think that would have stood a chance, right? Mm -hmm. um, so my deck just, pivots a lot. Like, you pivot from being aggressive or defensive, pivot, depending on... Pivot. Like, yeah, <laughs> pivot. It's, it's so insane. <laughs> I like, just want to see Ross p pivoting with your deck in the couch. <laughs> like, like, the... Uh, some people are saying, like, oh, I don't like the X-Death in the deck. I think it was... Uh, JG Fitness uh, cut the X-Death, I'm pretty sure. I don't think he's playing it. Uh, or he just pitches it and doesn't care. That was like the one sacred cow the whole time I was playing that like I could not let go of that card because it. I would say I had to win, what was it? Was it six or eight rounds in a row? I think I had to go 6-0 to qualify yeah. from 32nd. And I would say four of those six games were won the turn of or the turn after dropping XF on the field. Yeah. Speaking like, of sacred cows, you know how they, I think I've said it before that like, we, we talked a lot of before about not having sacred cows, right? Mm -hmm. And I told myself going into this tournament that I wanted to play the best deck that I could to give myself the best chance because I didn't have enough testing. Right. Um, but I knew I wanted to play fun decks because if I'm not having fun, I'm not going to have a good time, right? That's exactly so why I picked Agrius. And not I, like ironically, like I, I think we've water. joked, and a lot of people have joked about me playing, you know, two Fasoya decks, right? Because Fasoya is clearly my favorite character, two of my favorite cards in the game, right? I showed up to nationals with no Fasoyas. Mm -hmm. I actually bought my Fasoyas at nationals. I was down to play. So I had this like pretty cool tech that I wanted to play. And I should probably just keep it on the wraps. But uh, I had a pretty cool tech that, I, that you could see at Worlds. We'll see. Um, that involves some dark cards and some combos. Um, that, you know, Okimoto was kind of like, hey, man, like that's, that's really cute. Uh, but maybe you should just play Fasoya instead. And I was like, eh, I guess. <laughs> If Okimoto is telling me to play Fasoya, like you don't have to pull, you don't have to like, yank my chain to do it. All right, fine, we'll do it. And so, like, all right, I'll put two Fasoyas in the deck. And then I woke up, and then there was the, the list that had three Fasoyas, the purple lightning Fasoya, and I'm like, it's destiny. I, I didn't have no sacred cows. The cows, you know, like I, I let love go, and it came back to me. 
<laughs> you know, like, like I didn't, I didn't hold on to it. I, I let it go and it came back to me. So it's, it's funny how that worked out. That's it's so great. I was so happy yeah, to play the changing cards with. thing. Yeah. Like I, I changed a couple of the backups around. Like I, I cut one gramps. I played a unit age. I played a Minwoo. So I played a Minwoo and a Cecil uh, legend. Cause I'm just so greedy. <laughs> but... Your deck seems so bad. <laughs> um, hey, whatever gets you to the to worlds, right? Yeah. Right. So I, I cut like one of the four CP backups for the Minwoo. Yeah. Yeah. So your journey from top, just, just hearing about your journey from top 32 to make it was like pretty insane. Um, you know, like what I, what I was trying to tell people when I was talking to this the whole day too, about like, she's worried like, well, this is like going to be really hard, but like, well, kind of, but like every time you beat someone like that person's now out. Right. Yep. So you think, you think like, well, it's hard because I got to win all these best of ones. It's like, yeah, but every time you do, you knock someone else out of contention completely. Right. Right. I will yeah, say I call it alley ooping because uh, Ben Parrott actually alley ooped me two games where he like he beat somebody and I knocked him out. He beat somebody, I knocked them out too. <laughs> just kept going up the oh, line. Really? Yeah, we were, I was like following him up the bracket. That's interesting. I was really glad to get to play against Ben on stream. I, I told him like that was like the perfect like way to have. It's, like, it's just that the best way happen. to end yeah. the season, right? Is for mm -hmm. me to play Ben Parrott on 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 stream, right? Yep. For me to beat Ben Parrott was the best way. Yeah. To end <laughs> <laughs> because had he beat me. It actually, it may have been more. It may have been more of, of a, a cooler story if he beat me at nationals and it went on to win to win it. But I was happy that it ended the way it did. Ben's always such a fantastic sport and uh, really fun to play against. Uh, but I was happy to see it go down like it was. What I did sure love, you are. <laughs> what I did love though is that like I felt like I, I I don't love the format at the end like the way the European was where like the. The first, if if the loser seed loses in the finals, they're out, right? It's like, well, yeah, they come in with one. a loss, is how it yeah. works, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that, right? I think the fix is they come in, uh, and they have to win the best two or three, and if they win, now now that winner still gets their advantage. They get to play, have to play again. The problem is, is that like, I was rewarded this whole, I was rewarded this whole day, being in the winners bracket. I never had to use my reward, luckily. I never had to use my one-up, right? But in the finals, my one-up was taken from me. Like, you're in the <laughs> finals now, you don't get the advantage. You earned it, but now you don't get it. That was the yeah. one thing I didn't love. Like, it was so, <laughs> like you get to the finals, and you haven't lost a match the whole day, and all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, but if you lose now, it's over. And it's like, well, hold on a second. <laughs> Has my, hasn't my opponent already lost a match? Yeah, it, it, like in fighting games, where you, the, top you're, the loser goes into the top, they play a best of, they go best of five, but for us, it'd be best of three. Yeah, uh, and then if the loser wins, it it's a bracket reset, and now you're both on even f footing, and they have to win another best of three. So that's makes like sense. typically how that works. That makes uh, sense, though, right? Time concern, I know, is the main argument against that for here. One thing I could have imagined is if the loser has to win a best of one, and if they do, they get to play a real best of three. So it's kind of like a hybrid of the two. Like you have to bracket reset with the losers' rules. I like that. I like that because you you give them you give them a chance you also save a little bit of time and you also still reward the winner's bracket yes. so you actually kind of check all three boxes i also think you could just do best of 5 and be like well if you can't beat the loser best of 5 with one win i think is what i saw rb say and i could agree with that too yeah yeah because if you can't beat the loser in a best of 5 like they still deserve it you know what i'm saying like you you can't argue mm -hmm. that you got backup locked in in a best of 5 i mean it sure it could happen but like yeah i mean yeah like a I, meteor I'll... could also hit them the <laughs> the area but. <laughs> yeah like shout out to hunter uh rough beats like swiss he's just destroyed two owed me and when you go to those best of ones like you're talking about best of fives like you know you're gonna have some good games in there he got that luck on best of one where just like backup backup don't see another backup for five or six turns is win water like it was it was brutal and then i was yeah. you know doing agorious things so and he almost still killed he put me to five at one point it was really frustrating <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was actually, I was unaware of the the change in like the finals, so I thought it was just like Euros. Mm -hmm, like Vince so comes I. over, so I walk up to Vince and he goes, "Sam just won game one." I'm like, "So Sam's national champion, right? Like, we're done here. Like, um, <laughs> we're done." He's like, he's like, "No, no, he doesn't get any advantage for being the winner." I'm like, "What? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't the, agree with that at all." <laughs> I, I I don't either, but I wasn't gonna make a big sink about it because you know I think it's important to be a good sport. Mm -hmm. um going into i i think that like this year you look at the way nationals was run i i saw there's still lots more to talk about nationals so i don't, I don't want to skip it um 
there's a lot of really important things I want to cover. But I do want to also say the way Nationals was run this year was so perfect. I have zero complaints. Yes, yeah. day one started a little bit late. Um, but I, don't th- I, don't, I didn't hear anyone complaining. Everyone was in a good mood. It was run so smoothly. There was no repairings. Uh, the judge staff was excellent. We, di- I, we didn't have any absurd cheating going on that at least nobody was Became made aware, aware of. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, for look like for an and North American event to be run that smoothly means that the rest of the world now has kind of like a they they can shut up about it. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it was run. It was run well. Not the Will same thing happened. No, no, no. No. Not the same mistakes didn't happen. Yeah. Mistakes did happen, I'm sure. Um, but it, it was run so smoothly. I think Richie and uh, her team did an f- absolutely fantastic job um, at running the event. I thought, from what I heard, uh, they did a great job commentating. Um, it seemed great that during the interviews, it was great. Uh, most I watched of my match and it's too busy uh, playing. I like the commentary a lot. It, it, I don't. It I don't watch the, match. I just can't. But. I wanted to because other reasons, and like I want to see kind of like comments on pl- lines of play and, and like sounds you know, sounds okay. Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> um, How many so, times you watch it? Three times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people are so absurd. <laughs> <laughs> get a life, people. Anyway, uh, yeah. If you don't get it, that's fine. Um, so. <laughs> I watched the game and you know how we talked about uh, different like levels of commentary and like types of commentary and like yeah. being able to do, you know, on-site analysis of what's happening. And then there's the next level of analysis where you kind of go, well, now this is what they might be thinking based on this. And this is what they want. The pairing of commentators is actually very good for that. Uh, like Okimoto had that deep analysis and uh, Jason was kind of had that like, you know, energy active like all right this is what's happening on board and we're going to talk about it blah blah engage oki have conversation and yeah. oki was able to build off that and go in more detail i really like the the dynamic they had on stream yeah I will, from, I, I'm, i've only watched my game so far i would like to go back and watch some more of the rounds but yeah i, I will say my buddy alex who I, I i referenced quite a few times as being one of the only people that would actually volunteer to help me test for this event um <laughs> said that like he thought the commentary from both of the uh both players was was amazing Serena had mentioned so how how great Oki did, and also said that like one thing that Jason was really great about was like bringing up. Well, if you didn't know this, this is how this worked, and bringing up the stuff mm-hmm. that the newer That's players too, yep. wouldn't get. And so, like, I I heard that it went really excellent, um, by all accounts. So that's that's really good. Now, of course, we're looking at having uh, Rice and Brian do Worlds, which is going to be great, be absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, the bar was set really high here. Um, so who knows, you know, yeah. the, the interview is that I official or is that just really like good. what they're talking about? No, it's official. Oh, it yes. is official. Okay. I didn't see official. about that yet. Yeah. It's official. Um, yeah, got announced today. So yeah, it's official. Oh, is it? Oh, mm-hmm. so going into the, we make the top eight, right. And, um, I think, so the way the pairings work, the brackets are really confusing for most people. You have, I think you have to be there and yeah, have yeah. the board in front of yeah. you. And when the yeah. board's in front of you, it just makes absolute sense. So yeah. don't and worry. It's, it's super satisfying place. too, I will say, yes. to like see your name pinned on it, just moving up the board. Like, oh, oh only two more steps. Only one more step. <laughs> yeah. There was one step where it was it was me uh, versus we were getting ready to get paired against Lopez. And we'd figured out that, and this worked out really unfortunately, but we figured out that the winner of this match is qualified for Worlds, yep. right? Then the loser gets to play again to qualify for Worlds, yep. right? And if they lose that one, all you need is Sam Tool or Kyle Peters to qualify, and then they still get their qualification. Yeah. So there's actually a world where if I lose to Lopez, that you were the person that eliminates my spot from worlds yeah. where you beat Sam. Yeah. So it, it's just, it, it's super, it, it's a super interesting way that things worked out. I would, again, I would have never dreamt that we as a team make it all yeah. three of us are going to worlds and, and not to like toot our own horn or pat our own back, but I mean, there are 12 people. No, it's in insane. We're, we're a quarter of the team. People. Yeah. 12 people going <laughs> to worlds and three of them are right here. Yeah. But you know what? I think that shows a lot for our dedication too. Like we we put in the time, we put in the work and we 
yes, some of us didn't have a lot of t testing going into nationals, but we put in a lot of talk and theory and yeah. discussion about even through this podcast where we, where I learned things from the two of you, hopefully you learned something from me and hopefully that helped qualify us for worlds. I can only imagine that like, you know, putting so much energy into something and like reaping some of that back is just feels so good, you know, cause we all, all three of us put so much into final fantasy and like to be able to even just go and represent North America is actually just so cool. Um, yeah, for sure. And I will say that like being a North American champion does mean something to me. Yes, I'm qualified for Worlds. Um, and that was I, I was more than thrilled about that, obviously. Um if you want if you want to see how thrilled I was, watch my interview. I just I couldn't, <laughs> even, hold, I couldn't even hold it together, I'll tell you right now. Um but to be a North American champion means that I get to represent um North America throughout the rest of, for the next year. And hopefully I do a good job at being a representative of the game um, and role model. Cause I think that's really important. Um, I, I customize, I can a, a, a little bit to like the way you look at like uh, Alex Hyancox when Alex won the world championship, you couldn't help but be happy because you have someone like Alex representing the game. Right. Um, yes. He can be off the cusp a little bit sometimes, but Alex is a, a good guy and really does a good job at representing FFTCG. Uh, so it's really cool. Now the three of us have that <laughs> opportunity, right? To, to not only go and, and, and represent North America, but now we get to go and represent FFTCG as a world champion if we get there. Mm -hmm. and, and I will say that I'm interested, I'm interested to see what we'll pick for our world's promos if we made it. If if we win, we'll have to do a podcast next week or something. Where oh, we so just you weren't cover. in the Tampa chat, but I, I went through all of my options. All okay. right, so so we'll definitely have to do that. Get the three of us together. We'll talk about our <laughs> options if we win Worlds. What is our... our um... Oh, I'm ready right now. <laughs> I was so disappointed, though. I didn't realize, A, you couldn't do Legends. Yep, so the new Fasoy is out. You can't do Amano Arts. Yep, so the old Fasoy is out. And you can't do Commons, which I'm sure. But but yeah, I uh, at first I was thinking 2CP Gilgamesh for me. Like Wait, the you full can't, art with the crazy. It's a legend, it's a legend though. Yeah. yeah, it's a legend, did and you, it's a mono art. Did you say you can't do oh, comment? Yeah. Uh, correct. It has to be rare or hero. Okay, hold on. You guys continue. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll do this we'll, another time. We'll, we'll we'll another we're, time. We're, we're gonna save it. We're gonna. Oh, save okay, it. okay. We're gonna save it. Um, so it, it's really cool. Um, and I, I will say that, like, you know, without people like supporting this cast, that would have been possible. I don't think that the three of us would have still had the heart for the game that we do that is brought to by doing this cast. Um, a lot, a lot of, a lot of the, the passion I get for the game comes from being able to meet with you guys every week and talk with you guys um, about doing, about the sets, about things that are happening, about events, about drama, about uh, kinda, judging. It kind of keeps us like on track too, right? Like we always have something we know there's weeks we miss, there's stuff happens, but like, well, there's not weeks we it's miss almost... podcasting. There's just weeks we don't post them. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then uh, like, it almost keeps us honest, so to speak. We're like, you know, we we know we have this. It's not an obligation, but like, it's kind of our own personal set obligation. Like, we're gonna do For this. Sure. We're gonna, yeah. So. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and you'll notice that we've gotten away from some things that we've gotten away from doing, like uh, individual. Like, we're, let's go through the whole spoiler. Sometimes we've gotten mm -hmm. away from doing like, oh, well, let's. Let's cover every deck that made first and talk about every list or what we're playing right now. And really just talking about our love for the game and the cool things that are happening. Because exactly what you're saying, we're getting away from the obligations of, well, this is what we have to cover because yeah. it's happened. And moving more into like, hey, this is what we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I actually got, I talked to quite a few people at Wolves Den while you guys were busy qualifying for Worlds. I was, <laughs> I was you, you were busy qualified for Worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I did win some board games and stuff. Um, they're over there. But, uh, <laughs> they're over there. Um, Just so you know. But I, I talked to a lot of people, uh, met a lot of people uh, that were big fans of the podcast. And I was like, oh, thanks. I think now that we're qualified for Worlds, I was like, we probably should step the, our content up. And they're like, oh, no. They're like, I actually enjoy when you guys just kind of like ramble and talk about like just nothing. And I was like, oh, well, we, <laughs> like, we really, uh, like, we really appreciate that. You have no idea. Like, so. Well, that's the thing. It's, that's all we do for, for, the, for, for fun, right? Like, it's, it's, it, it, it's very much like I think we used to have an entire list of everything we needed to cover and now mm -hmm. we're just like well this happened and that happened we can talk about it and if we if yeah, sam like, goes on a tangent we won't 
<laughs> those are my notes. <laughs> yeah, those are my notes. Which I'm surprised you have Dark CC on there because that must be a recent ad. <laughs> well, you you said it, and yeah, oh, right. so so you said it, and I wrote it. Then I wrote Nationals. Oh, I didn't have anything right. written at first. <laughs> like, so. Yeah. So you can see that we put a lot of effort into this podcast. <laughs> yeah, like other, I'm trying to find an example of an older one, but yeah, other times there's yeah. like you know stuff laid out, but usually no. we're just spitballing here. So <laughs> yeah. sometimes yeah, I cross it, stuff off like yeah, we kind of covered it. So, sometimes you become the national champion by just spitballing two decks that you decide to play at the last minute. <laughs> like I legit had you to R. I was playing with like so I was playing with water. It was a very very different deck. Very and clean, just, good living version. Yeah, and I was just the, like the spicy yeah, this is Friday night chick version. Dark. Yeah, and so I do want to I do want to mention that like all right, so the judges didn't let me have a little bit of fun. All right, so here here's oh. what I did for those that for those that don't know. Okay, I took Regaldo's deck um, from the Dark CC, his actual deck list, like folded up, turned in. I took that list, crossed out his name, added 2.0 to his deck name, changed a few cards, and turned it in as like my own, right? And I knew that the deck had been deck checked, so I knew that like the cards were right, the set numbers. I knew everything was right. I I deck checked it myself. Turned out they're like, yeah, there's too many scratches on this. You have to cross it out. I'm like, are you serious? You have to do it again. Right. You mean right. <laughs> not cross it out because there's too right, many right. cross outs. <laughs> yeah. So I pull out my backup, which I had a backup already filled out. I cross out the name on this one and just write, judges suck. Now, I know judges don't suck. I'm a judge myself, so I'm just poking fun. Oh, judges suck. Of course, they posted that and they blacked it out. You can't even see it. They posted the list with judges suck blacked out, right? But that wasn't even the true crime. The true crime is that they didn't let wait, me use that, my wait, username. Psalms one hundred four. That, that wasn't you then. That they put that. That was that. That was oh, okay. that was the deck. I'd cross that one out. I'd cross that out and put judges suck. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, geez. But my username was Josh Gu. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, you can't do that. And I was like, all right. No, that's that's fair. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. But like, can I do like, gosh, j? Ja? <laughs> they're like, <laughs> nah, you can't do that one either. Kage san. Ah. <laughs> can't do these things. Um, but all in all, I, I didn't really care. I'm just poking fun. It was it was a good time. I, yes, I would have loved to have Josh Gu as my username. So every time someone got paired, like, oh, I'm playing as Josh Gu. You know, like, that would have been <laughs> funny. That would have been funny. And I think they should really put some sort of limitations on these names if they don't want us coming up with these That things. is exactly, yep. Put whatever, like, sure, they probably can't cover Gosh Ja. They'd have to, you know, hand filter that one out. But like. I, I'm going to do, like, yeah, I, I already know how I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. Um but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But I, but I get it. That being said, um, overall, I thought, I just want to say, I know I've said it before, but like, sh- shout outs to Square Enix and Hobby Japan for an excellently, excellently run event. Um, perfect in my mind. Perfect. And it wasn't just because I won. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was a really perfect, solid event. And yeah. so I couldn't be more excited. And I couldn't be more excited that I get to go to Worlds with my Choker Brothers which is just insane, right? <laughs> like, this is real. This is happening. Like, we're going to Worlds. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty absurd. It's kind yeah, of surreal been, still. Been a, been a long and wild journey. Um, I think we're all pretty stoked about it. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's. I, it kind of happened. I, I remember, like, I was there. It happened. I was, like, I was happy because I almost, like, won. I was, like, oh, sweet. But then, like, you were behind me, like, ah, and you, like, exploded. And I was, like, oh, ah, I got up and, like, I'm, like, all right, cool, celebrate. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> at first I was just, like, did I just win? <laughs> like, it was, yeah, yeah no, that was the it, whole it, day it, I had the edge. I mean, I was 30-second seed. All I, My goal this year was make day two. I didn't have the testing. I didn't expect to, like, be able to make it that far. And yeah. I, I was just playing every game. I'm, like, I'm just going to play good foul fantasy. And if I get there, I get there. And just, like, I kept getting there. And uh, I, I do have to say shout out for my for and the finals for Mandel being such a good sport because there's a point you'll see like you'll see the and you I'm sure you're behind me, but like, I just throw my cards down I'm just like dude this is what I have would you just die just die <laughs> like why won't you die and like he was like Fina into this like he's just doing his best to survive. I'm like dude I just want to become the national champion will you die already like, <laughs> I, I throw my cards on the table I'm like can you beat this and it's like, he's such a good sport he's such such a good sport and he's yeah, like he was fun to play against he, while he was he's like, he's like now that you showed me ha 
Kazee. <laughs> I was yeah. like, man. In fact, I'll, I'll, I want to say that every... I, I, when I say things, I want to mean them. I always am known for saying the truth, even if it's not so good to hear. But I think that, yeah, every opponent I had this weekend, every single one was a fantastic sport. Every one of them. Whether they got... Uh, whether we had a, an amazing game um, or whether they got back up flooded or back up locked either way, they were all amazing sports. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that fantastic. about all but one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. He wasn't even a bad sport. He was just, you know, he, he was salty. That kept top talking about like, that's what Agrius does, bro. <laughs> like I'm always going <laughs> to draw something. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's like you drew a cane and then a cloud of darkness and then a facilia. I'm like, sure did. Well, that's, that's why you're only <laughs> running 16 backups. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Better to be lucky than good. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, it was very good. Uh, the crowd and like the, the community in general is definitely competition was up this year too. Like not only, like everyone worked super hard to get there. Everyone is very solid. Like kind of last year, there were definitely a few people that there you were talked no to them. They were, downs. yeah, they were from like nope. uh, smaller nope. areas and like yeah. they, you know, they had like a six person locals and they're just they got there. Uh, but so they, all the world's all the world's members were in attendance besides one, right? Besides Brian, yes, yep, and Okimoto and Okimoto. And so, Okimoto, yep. so and but was, there, were, yeah. so but there were no pass downs on invites. Mm -hmm. So all the top four it's actually pretty earned, insane considering their invite there, yeah. from making from from doing well at nationals, right? And that's not to say anything bad about those players that weren't able to pass the invite down, but it just says how tough the competition were that was that um, the invites didn't even pass down. It was and we just had a, and did you have four. to beat? So you lost to Kyle, but did you beat anybody else who was Worlds last year? You beat Lopez, last year, right? Chris, yeah, the national champion and Worlds player, Lo yeah, Lopez. Yeah. And did did Ben have to beat? He had to beat Hunter. Yeah. I had to beat Sam Tool. Like, I think we all had to beat a world's player at some point to, like, get our way up there, yeah. too. So, like, we really earned the stripes. <laughs> right. And, and, and every, again, every person I played against was absolutely a great sport. You know, I can't imagine, like, being in Lopez's position there as mm -hmm. the former national champion. And then, like, he's playing for a world spot and on camera. And he had such grace about him. And Lopez always does. He's always such a fantastic sport to play against. Um, but just just hit him, Ben, Emmanuel. I, I just couldn't go on to say enough about all of my my opponents this weekend. Again, such fantastic sports, like you know, and 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 probably the match that was the most fun for me was the match against Kyle. Uh, we went to game three. It was like uh, I I got him to six game one and lost. Uh, I seven owed him game two, and then I got him to six again game game three had the game locked and he like drew a nail and like was able to kill myself. It was oh yeah. Fantastic. His turn was it's like nail into fury and but, kill your hey, two things. But and... perfect because that, it was such a fun I'm game. Based. I had a good time. Like if, if I had lost the rest of the matches, like just, I would have had the same feeling that that, that match was so much fun. So yeah. So I guess we're going to worlds. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yep. I don't know when you guys can hear from us for the next podcast. I mean, we'll probably try to do it next week. But if we're, we'll, we'll cover some things. We'll probably cover the pre-release, um, which is coming up way bef sooner than I thought it was. Um, it's not this weekend, right? It's the next? It's next weekend, yeah. Okay. Next week is the pre-release weekend, and then release weekend. But between that, I think we're going to be doing a lot of testing, um, probably doing a lot of team chats, a lot of team meetings and stuff. Um, so I do want to say thank you guys for the support. Um, I'm not saying that we won't put up anything, but it might be scarce. It might be late. Um, your typical Choker Bro stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it, might, it, might, it might show up. <laughs> Business when it's ready. as usual. Yeah, yeah. It might show up when it's ready to show up if it shows up. Uh, but when it does, we we appreciate you guys' support. All right, yeah. guys. Well, I think that about wraps us up for this week. Yeah. Um, yeah. We will see you guys at Worlds and maybe sooner. Uh, <laughs> but until then, we've been the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Sam Snape Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. And we will see you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuckle Bros Podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page, or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CardiVillies.com and use promo code Chuckle Bros to get 10% off your next order.